Hey, howdy guys, Connor McCaskill here. In Castle Rock Trail, I've actually been here before, beautiful trail, definitely recommend it if you're in the Southern California area. Now I might intercut this talking head with some talking head that I did earlier with the R6. So if you see like a jump in, I don't know, terrain, that's why. But I just wanna go ahead and talk through my thoughts on the EOS R6. So one of the first things that I noticed with the Canon EOS R6 is that we are actually not able to record in 4K all I, it's only IPB. Uh, kind of frustrating, it's still really good. I would like to see that implemented. In fact, Armando, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we're gonna be getting potentially a firmware update. They're in talks there are talks about it. about it. Yeah, so there's, there's talks about an all I update coming to the R6, which would be fantastic because 4K IPV is, I don't know, it's a little bit of a downer. We're actually shooting for Armando's channel right now, a video about the R6 and the R5 and how they compare. So if you wanna see that video, definitely go check it out. I'll link it down below. I actually shot BTS for Armando when he did a cinematic test for the EOS R5. And honestly, it came out pretty well. The problems that I ran into, the R6 actually overheated shooting 4K IPB. So it was actually forced to shoot 1080p for almost half of the shots. In fact, go check out that video and see if you can see the difference between the two. That was definitely a bit of a downer, but in all fairness, it did actually look pretty good for 1080p. And we're also getting IBIS, which I'm actually using right now. Eight stops of IBIS, which we definitely need because I'm hiking and I'm really jelloey right now. So it should actually look pretty good in the camera, which is great. Something else that we're getting with the EOS R6 is actually animal eye tracking, which I tested out at a pond with some ducks and it did a really good job of tracking the eye of the duck. I just tested recording some ducks and super impressed. Armando saw it, what do you think? I think it works actually pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah, I was genuinely surprised how well it tracked a duck when I heard about animal autofocus track, I kind of figured it was gonna work with more like pet looking animals, dogs, cats, or extended versions of that, i.e. like tigers from a zoo or something. Uh, a duck's kind of a weird looking creature, but it got it. it. It held onto that eye tracking. And what's interesting is I was tracking one duck and he kind of floated his way over behind another duck and it kept tracking the one I was originally tracking. It didn't jump around. And I feel like that's probably a product of dual pixel autofocus version two, so that's pretty cool. And also, I took it to the zoo with Armando and was able to track all different types of animals, including birds. Now, I did run into an issue when tracking through the chain link fence. If I wasn't right up against the fence so that you couldn't see it, it was messing up quite a bit. It couldn't quite distinguish that I wanted to focus on the animal behind the fence. It thought that I wanted to focus on the fence, so a little bit of a bummer. I had to switch to manual focus for all that. And just so you guys know, right now I am shooting auto white balance, which is something I don't normally do, and auto ISO in C-Log. This is a new feature that we are getting on the EOS R6, which is actually doing a pretty good job right now. I'm looking at the display and I mean, the highlights are blown out, but this thing doesn't have 16 stops of dynamic range. I actually don't know what it has, but it's pretty good. So definitely no complaints there. So on the R6, we are getting a 5.5K sensor. Now this is really cool because what this means is when you're shooting 4K, we're actually getting a down sampled 5.5K to 4K. So it's actually a really high quality, slightly sharper 4K than say a camera that can't shoot 6K down sampled like the new Sony A7S. Three. So that's really interesting. Now with this camera, we are getting all the same color profiles that you would expect with a Canon camera. There's no surprises. Uh, we do get C-Log as I mentioned earlier, which I do really like. I was kind of afraid that they might cripple the R6 and give only the R5 Canon log, but that's not the case. We get Canon log in the R6 as well, which I really enjoy because that's pretty much all I shoot. Okay, crazy thing that just happened that uh, Armando actually noticed that I didn't notice is that uh, when you turn off the camera, the <laughs> IBIS turns off. So I actually wasn't using IBIS this whole time. Uh, so that's kind of crazy. So hopefully it's more stable now. That's definitely a weird bug. It shouldn't it should remember the last setting that you had on the camera. It shouldn't just default to off. Uh, in fact, I would almost never turn it off except in very specific situations, especially if I'm doing these vlog things. So uh, keep that in mind if you pick up the R5 or the R6, always make sure to check your IS settings because it, it might be switched off for no reason whatsoever. Okay, I want to clarify something that I said in the video that may not make sense. So I want to do a visual demonstration. I'm just recording this on my iPhone. So, you know, 
look past the quality, but when I'm talking about being able to turn off internal body image stabilization, what I mean by that is that I can't turn off internal stabilization but keep the lens stabilization. The reason why you would want to do that is if you're in a particularly rough situation, like if you're inside of a car and it's really bumpy and you want to turn off the jelloiness of the internal body image stabilization that's jiggling around the sensor, but you still want a little bit of stabilization so you turn on the lens stabilization. That's not how this works. So if I go into my IBIS settings, I literally have digital IS on and off. That is my only option. Now, in order to turn off IBIS on the inside of the camera, I have to go around and switch the stabilization switch on the lens, which then also disables it on the internal body image stabilization in the camera. So that's kind of annoying. I wish that I had the flexibility to control the camera IBIS separate from the lens IBIS. So if I turn it on on the lens, I immediately turned it on on the camera and I just don't have the custom ability that I would want. Okay, and to clarify one more thing that I said in the video in relation to IBIS on this camera, when I said that it turned itself off, I think what it's doing is when I take out and put in a new battery, it's resetting the camera, but this is the setting that I'm talking about. So if I go back into here with a lens that does not have a IS switch. It has to be a lens without an IS switch. I was using a 28 to 70, so this is a 50 millimeter just as the example. If I go into my image stabilization sensor, you'll see that I have an IS mode toggled on, and then I can also turn that off. And essentially what this is doing is it's acting as the IS switch that your lens would have, that again is controlling whether or not your internal stabilization is on or off. This mode actually goes away if you have a lens with IS on it. And this is kind of the customization that I'm talking about that I wish this mode was always on and this controlled IBIS and I could control whether or not I want IBIS on and off. And then from the lens, I could do it on the lens if I so choose. Here's something interesting about the overheating issues that we are experiencing on the Canon R6 and even the Canon EOS R5 for that matter is that when it says that it's overheated, uh, the camera is not hot. Like when I was shooting the BTS, the 4K, it said, it's overheated, sorry, you can't shoot any more 4K. I had to take out the battery, I tried taking out the SD cards, I'd let it sit for a minute, and then I would turn it back on, and it, yeah, it would cool off a little bit, but it still wouldn't let me record much 4K, and that's why I had to shoot in 1080p. Same thing on the EOS R5. Because the camera isn't hot, we couldn't really figure out how to cool it. Even when we were on set with the R5, we were using ice packs to try to cool it down, we used a leaf blower to try to cool it down. I mean, we were getting into like ridiculousness territory and we couldn't get the camera to cool down. So that kind of makes me believe that Canon can fix this overheating issue in both of these cameras that maybe they're just being real conservative with their overheating. And if that's the case, that's great because that's really gonna save this camera and the R5 camera because with the overheating in the 4K IPB, definitely a downer. I, it's already a low quality 4K and if it overheats and you're forced to film in 1080p, I don't know how usable this camera is gonna be for long term shoots. Okay, right now we are recording with internal mics on the EOS R6. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is because I noticed something interesting about the R6 that's different than the R5 in terms of the body. On the back side of the EOS R6, there's actually a little bitty mic input. That's something that's not on the R5. So what I'm curious about is if I turn around the camera and talk to you guys from this side, if it also sounds clear. Uh, right now I'm recording Armando, messing around with the EOS R5, and I'm just talking right into the back of the camera. I actually haven't tested this for myself, so I'm curious to hear as to what this sounds like. So I've now messed around with the 120 frames per second mode in the R6. Now with the R6, that is a 1080p max resolution, whereas in the R5, you get the 4K at 120 frames per second. I gotta say, just from quickly testing it out and recording, I think it looks really good. Um, I don't really think you need 4K 120. If you really want 4K 120, you can pay the extra money for it. But I think that what we're getting out of the R6 is really good, especially for the price point that Canon has placed it at. Let's go ahead and talk about the body design of the EOS R6. I actually am a fan of quite a lot of things that it has over my Canon EOS R that I used to have. The Canon EOS R did not have a joystick. It had like this weird touchpad thing. By the way, I'm climbing under a log right now, so 
excuse this, but the R6 has a joystick, which is reminiscent of the 5D series and other cameras like that, which I greatly enjoy. It's much, much easier to change my focus point with a joystick instead of this weird touchy thing that they did on the R. I don't know, didn't like that. Also, with this camera, you're going to be getting a better mic jack position than on the R. On the R, the tilt screen, which is over here, can't see me flipping it, but it would, the mic jack would get in the way of the flip screen, and I really enjoy that. Now I can flip the flip screen all the way around, all the way back around. Again, you can't see it, but you get the picture. I can flip the flippy screen. Nothing gets in my way. Also, on the top of the R6, we're getting a mode dial, which I really enjoy. I don't like that I had to click this weird mode button, and then I could switch into photo mode and then pick my photo mode from that, or vice versa into video mode. With the R6, I do have a fully functioning mode dial, so I can just pick exactly what I want really quickly. It's definitely a feature I enjoy. All right, guys, so uh, this kind of all begs the question, who is the Canon EOS R6 for? I'm a Fujifilm X-T4 user. I absolutely love my Fujifilm X-T4, and I'm getting a lot of the same features, aside from full frame, my X-T4 that I'm getting on the EOS R6. The difference is, is that the EOS R6 kind of has this weird overheating gimmick that I have not experienced in my X-T4. I know some people have said, including my friend Zach Mayfield, that he's had overheating issues in the X-T4, but I have not experienced that myself. You get beautiful colors in the X-T4. You get beautiful colors in the Canon. But the Canon's $2,500 body only, whereas the Fujifilm X-T4 is under $2,000. Honestly, when I first heard about the Canon R6, I was pretty much sold on it. I, in fact, I told Armando that I was like, dude, I think I'm gonna sell my X-T4 and buy an R6 because, you know, Canons are just kind of workhorses. But at the end of the day, I really don't think in its current state that I can recommend buying the R6. I know for myself, I'm not going to buy it in this state. If Canon can fix the overheating or give us all i 4k or make it to where i don't have to switch into 1080p mode i'll be honest the r6 would be very very enticing and i think it would become my main camera but until that happens i don't know it's just it's just not for me